Okay, so this is chapter 21, which is the sexually transmitted infections or STIs. So I have, um, let's see, this is just kind of talks about the history of the naming of STDs or STIs. So in the 1800s, they were called venereal diseases. And I kind of remember them calling them that during my sex ed, which I wasn't born in the 1800s. But okay, so venereal diseases are VD. Then they call they used to call them social diseases. <laughs> and then STD, but STD is saying there's something wrong with the host like dysfunction, so something's broken in the host, whereas nowadays they're saying STI because that means that there's actually a, an infection or a pathogen in there. Okay, so the first one that we're going to talk about is trichomoniasis. So trichomoniasis is, uh, is a protozoa that's found in the vagina. Okay, so it's trichomonas vaginalis. Um, it causes a foamy vaginal discharge that sp smells fishy. Okay, the discharge can be yellow, gray, or white. Um, it causes pain in females, and it can be asymptomatic in, in males. Um, the cervix looks kind of strawberry. They call it a strawberry cervix. So it, in order to, um, to see it, they'll do a wet mount. Well, they'll do a dry mount first, and then they can do a wet mount of the discharge, and then you can see these moving um, organisms in there. Okay, so transmission is sex or fomites, and then they're they're going to treat it with uh, um, with flagell. So this is an antiprotozoan, so metronidazole. Okay, so. There's also vaginosis that's caused by bacteria. Okay, so the big one is Gardenella um, vaginalis, and then there's some other organisms that can be in there. Okay, so the presentation is discharge and vaginal odor. Okay, so the organism gets in the in the cells. <clears throat> okay, so they can treat it with um, metronidazole or clindamycin, they, so they treat it with antibiotics. Okay, now the problems with having these is that they can cause pelvic inflammatory disease. So PID, or PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, is the, the fallopian tubes will get inflamed and they can scar. So the, um, it reduces fertility rates. And then people that have PID, if they get pregnant, okay, they can have a premature delivery and they can have low birth weight babies. Okay, so the babies are at risk. Um, they can also have more ectopic pregnancies. Okay, now the next thing is gonorrhea. Okay, so gonorrhea is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea. Um, it's an intracellular diplococci, so you can see the little two cells um, that grows on this chocolate auger pretty well. Okay, um, it can be in asymptomatic in males or females, but it could also um, <laughs> cause um, a copious, purulent, okay, so pussy discharge. Okay, so it can infect the cervix, it can cause conjunctivitis, um, can inflame the rectum, the throats, it can go septic. Um, it causes um, painful urination and it can cause um, pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay, and then here's the conjunctivitis in a newborn. Okay, so um, gonorrhea, to diagnose it, they're going to do a smear. Okay, so then with the smear, they can um, look for the organism. They can also do fluorescent antibody stains to try to detect it. <clears throat> okay, um, gonorrhea treatment. Okay, so gonorrhea treatment. Gonorrhea has been around for a really long time, so it's developed resistance to most of the antibiotics. So there's still a ton of cases of gonorrhea in the United States. Okay, so it's, it's really high. Like these sexually transmitted diseases are going up and up and up. Okay, so now to treat it, what they'll, what they'll do is they'll give a shot of a cephalosporin with like azithromycin together. 
and it only takes like a one time shot so that like people might be I don't know I don't know why it keeps coming back okay like it doesn't go away okay so then they'll treat the partners so you don't keep giving it back and forth to each other um, they'll test for other STIs because usually if you have one it's easier to get the others so like if you have this it's easier to get HIV and then they're going to use education okay so it's it's always it's adapting and it's very resistant to antibiotics okay now if we talk about non gonococcal urethritis could be caused by a bunch of different things okay so it could be caused by um, chlamydia so they have a purulent discharge they're going to try to figure out what the organism is that's causing it and then they're going to they're going to give you antibiotics to try to treat it Okay, so then here's um, PID again, so the pelvic inflammatory disease. It could be caused by anything really, right? So they could have pain. This is a picture with a fallopian tube that's got pus in it. Um, so the cervix is inflamed, the peritoneum can be inflamed, and then it's going to affect your ability to have a baby in the future. Okay, so chlamydia is just going up and up and up, and if you look at it, now it's even higher. So this is from 2005. Okay, so it's it's going it's going up. Okay, now syphilis. Okay, so syphilis is interesting because it's caused by trypanema palladium, which is a spirochete. Okay, so we haven't talked about many spirochetes, but there you go. There's a spirochete. It can be um, transmitted if you come in contact with a lesion or with the body fluid. Okay, so I have some lovely pictures. So the primary syphilis, you get a canker. So a canker sore that's actually painless, and it's usually um, present for about three weeks. And then um, there will also be lymph node swelling around where, like, the lesion is. And what will happen, though, is that the, the lesions will heal for two to three weeks in two to three weeks, okay, and then they'll just kind of go away. So that's primary syphilis. Okay, so then secondary syphilis, the organism kind of becomes latent in the body. So sometimes people get a rash, okay, and the rash will go away, and you can still have syphilis in you, but you don't have any symptoms, okay? So the rash could be just on the palms or the soles, or it could be over the whole body. Okay, so it's kind of like the organism becomes latent. Okay, then tertiary syphilis is when the organism is multiplying in the tissue in the body. Okay, so it forms um, gummas. Okay, so it forms these lesions. It can um, start to degrade the bone. It can degrade the aorta. And then it can kind of turn your brain, your central nervous system into Swiss cheese. So not, not good. Okay, so there's also congenital syphilis. So congenital syphilis will go from the mom to the baby. So the mom hasn't had um, prenatal care, perhaps, and she's passed it on to the baby. So it can be transferred through the placenta. Um, the babies can be stillborn. They can be premature, and then they have all sorts of developmental disorders. Okay, the mom could be treated with penicillin, okay, and they'll treat the baby, but at this point it's the damage is done. Okay, so <laughs> primary and secondary syphilis reported cases per 100,000, and this is in 2005, the numbers have gone up. Okay, so if you look 2005, there's 8,725. Um, and in 2013, there was 16,000, so it doubled. Okay, so syphilis in men went up. Okay, so to diagnose syphilis, um, they'll look at the blood serum or the cerebral spinal fluid, and they're, they're looking for the spirochete. So they can do um, PCR to try to look for it. Okay, so syphilis can be treated with penicillin G. Okay, so it's going to be a shot or IV. 
um, secondary, <clears throat> they're going to have to give you a long dose of penicillin. Okay, so the idea is that they're going to screen pregnant women um, and that your and education. Okay, now there's other STIs, and they're, they're in the book. You can look at them. Um, we've talked about HPV and warts. We've talked about hepatitis. We've talked about HIV. We've talked about herpes. Okay, so um, there's lots of STDs out there, and the numbers, they're, they're going up, so it's kind of scary.